Greetings and salutations! Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? I'm Jenny. I'm Paul. And we are with the GoBox and Vanco Art Star. And we are here to teach you yet another cool painting project that we will do start to finish in about... This one will probably take... It goes a little bit faster than some of the canvas projects. Um, I'm gonna go DJ style for a second and check our audio. Okay, yeah. Yeah, last week our audio wasn't doing good. <laughs> We sounded, apparently we sounded like we were yodeling. So let us know if it sounds off or whatever. Last week was really weird, but. Let me pull this up. Okay. You go ahead and just keep doing your own. So in your go box kit that you received, you should have gotten three little wood rounds that um, come with a twine string. We're going to uh, paint sort of, uh, I went with a, a beachy theme for April's box. And the three ornaments we have is uh, we've got the octopus, and then we've got this cute whale. I, I love that one. And then this one, I was sort of going for a, uh, like here in Oregon, we have the bay. Is it just Tillamook Bay or is it Neatarts? Which one? The one in Tillamook. We have two? Tillamook Bay. Okay. Yeah, so we that's, are, that's kind of the look at, like, when we drive along there. And then I added the... Uh, the fir trees, and then I thought, you know, it really actually looks like a gorge scene. So it can be whatever you want it to be. So how are we doing, sound wise? It is a little like chick 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 chicky. Okay, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> nobody else is. Well, one other person. It's kind of going get 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 a little bit. Here you can listen. Okay. Let it's not. Talk. It's not terrible, but. Yeah, it is a little bit like last week. It's not as bad. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. And if it's really terrible for people, I can restart. Actually, I can restart the software. I'll just leave the stream up real quick. Okay. So, so if you're watching this, sit tight. Sit tight. And I'll talk to you a bit about paper. Well, no. If you talk, then you're going to be taking out for a second. Okay. So I'm going to be taking... Try this again. Buffering, buffering, buffering. Okay, let's go ahead and you can talk now. Okay. Okay, let's see if that's better. Yep, hopefully you guys have a beverage of your choice along with uh, all your supplies. So real quick, I'm gonna go over what we need. Um, I already went over the, the three wood rounds. Now you could do these paintings on rocks, which would be super cool. Um, if you have little canvases or even a bigger canvas and you want to do just maybe one of them on a canvas, you can absolutely do that. We good now. Okay. I have, actually, I don't need three brushes. Just two brushes Ooh, for this. We want two here. small ones. We want a really small pointy one for details. And then a medium size. It can be either a flat brush. Why don't you put the... Um, Let's do that. Put the document cam on. You got it. So we can see, people can see what we're talking about. You got stick girlfriend. Brother. Oh, uh, I'm not your brother. <laughs> and you're not my girlfriend, so. <laughs> there we go. There's our picture. All right. Picture. So here I have a, a two medium sized brushes. You can use, some of you may have a flat one, some may have a round. You just want to use one of them. And then the tiny detail brush. So, and then you, I have a paper towel for drying my brushes on once I wash them in the water. And then an old mug that I use for pa washing the paint brushes in between colors. And I think I covered everything. I've got my beverage. I've got my three rounds. Let's talk about paint colors. So I have the typical black and white. I have phthalo red, which is a, uh, it's, it's just a kind of a magenta pink. Phthalo blue is an indigo deep blue. Primary blue would work fine. You could mix a little black with it if you wanted it to be a little darker. Uh, raw sienna, also known as yellow ochre, or often called yellow ochre. It's the color of butterscotch, or wheat. And then my favorite, Bahama blue, which is the fun turquoise color. Paul and I are going to share a palette. These little wood rounds take such a small amount of paint that you don't need to load your palette up because chances are you'll end up with a lot of paint left over. So, and the way that we do this live is, uh, I know on the instructions, it talks to you about doing each one individually, and it, you know, it even mentions dry time and stuff. And I'm going to teach you these the way that I painted them when I made them all, th when I made all three of them, and that's that I 
painted one background black, set it aside, painted the next background, set it aside, painted the third background, set it aside, went back to the first one, and uh, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. One mistake I've made be before, because I've gotten a little too um, just quick at painting without thinking, is <laughs> pay attention to where the little drilled hole is, because I've you want it to hang a certain way, and I've done this before and realized that my design is this way when it needs to be hanging this way. So keep that in mind, That keep the hole at the top. Like 12 o'clock. Yes, 12 o'clock, think of it like a clock. Um, and then pick what's, like all of these, they're supposed to be very, very similar in size, and they are, but definitely I have, I have two that are larger and one that's smaller. Whatever is your favorite design, Maybe put that one on the biggest one. That's what I'm gonna do. I feel like the octopus, uh, he like he has all these tentacles and stuff and, and then uh, the stars in the background. So I'm gonna use my largest one, I think, for the octopus. And then I'll just decide on these two. I think maybe I'll do the, the whale on the, the second biggest one. So let's just set those others aside. Let's toast. Toast. <laughs> let's toast a Friday night. I'm having some fun painting, uh, getting your mind off all the craziness in the world right now. And just uh, enjoying your time tonight with us doing a painting. And there are no mistakes, only happy little accidents, as Bob Ross said. Let's toast right. to that. Cheers! With, with my Blue Moon beer. They're not a sponsor, but they could be. <laughs> That's right. Are you out there, Blue Moon? <laughs> they did have a nice toasted pretzel last year, and that would have been perfect for yeah. a toast. Toasted pretzel. Yeah. Yeah, so this week Paul bought a uh, sampler pack of Blue Yeah, Moon. I did. Just and on a whim. Your flavors in there were, they were good. I'm right. not a beer person. I tried to like it repeatedly. Well, and Blue Moon's not usually my go-to. I'm usually more of a crafty kind of guy, but the uh, iced uh, uh, cold brew coffee. Yeah, that was good. Flavor was really good. And, and then, then mango. The mango wheat. The yeah. mango wheat was yummy. So. If you're not a beer person, but you think something might be better, you know, worth trying. So yeah, is this one that you're drinking, the Belgian white? Is this that, is just the regular. Is yeah. that the one that when we go to a bar or whatever, they usually put an orange slice? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So the citrus does something special? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and take our medium-sized brush, whichever is your largest one. I shouldn't say medium because we're just using two. We usually use three. Uh, take your largest brush. Go ahead and dip it in the water. Kind of brush it around the bottom of the cup just to soften up the bristles and wake them up. And then dry it off on the towel with acrylic paint. You don't want too much water unless we're doing something that's kind of thinned out. Are we um, sounding okay? Yeah, I think so. But we're going to turn that camera off while you're doing this. Okay. So see you in a bit. See you in a bit. So let's go ahead and paint one of these, whichever one you picked for the octopus, solid black. And the paint dries on the wood super fast, as those of you guys who've done the kits for the last several months, no, um, because of the wood projects we did a month or two ago. I do like that, that it dries fast. It allows you to move along pretty quickly. So it doesn't really matter what direction your brush strokes go for this, since it's just a basic full-on black background. Which one? I guess it doesn't matter which round one I use. I'm gonna take your phone away from you. Sorry, now. I'm just checking the feed, make sure it's all good. I saw that. Uh, but I can't reach the paint very well. Okay, let's put it in between us. Let's put it in between. So I'll here I'll pull the octopus yeah, up here yeah, for you to see. Idea. I just uh, put everything on one of our Oregon boards. One that I have had at home for quite a few well, maybe like three years. I love the holes in it. <laughs> So I knew people wouldn't want to paint on that. So I thought, you know, I'm going to clean this up and seal it and use it as a cheese board. And I've never sealed it. I've washed it with soap and water. And I have used it as a cheese board. <laughs> but I probably should seal it if I don't get any paint on it. You know, I'm thinning mine down just a little bit more. Just a little trick I've used from painting on wood. Okay. And what it does is it actually stains the wood works like a stain rather than a paint on the surface. So yeah, that would be if you guys like a little bit of wood grain showing. I'm going for a full on matte coat of paint, but or solid coat of paint. Um, but if you do want to have the wood grain showing, you can water the paint down and treat it like a wood stain. Here, I'll show it to you in just a second. 
right. You just think you're doing some extra special stuff, don't you? Says she who blew up the lighthouse with the Death Star last week. That is correct. And speaking of the Death Star, we just posted on uh, gobox.com. That, that's spelled G-O-G-H-B-O-X.com. We are doing a May the 4th episode live class with, uh, we're painting a Chewbacca that's super glam with rainbow colors in his hair and it's really cute. We did it last year in the studio and it was a sold out class and yeah, we just posted that tonight. We've already sold how many kits? Four or five? Three or four or five. Three, four or five. Who knows? By the time we get done, it might be 20. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, get your Chewbacca kit, and uh, that class is Monday, May the 4th at 7.30, and we'll be going through that one. And we're here in Oregon. We ship, as soon as the order comes in, we try to ship it the next day, if we can. And uh, I know we have everything in stock, canvas and everything, so we should be able to ship out um, kits tomorrow. And pretty much everything that's going, like, uh, west of the Mississippi is less than three days. So as long as you get it in. For the most part, yeah. There have been a few random weird delays. Well, and right now there are starting to be some delays with delivery of stuff just because of everything else that's going on. You know, I feel like we need to put together one of those um, care kits for the delivery drivers. They have come to our, they come to our door daily. Yeah. <laughs> delivering art supplies. And I feel so bad because it's like, we have this gate and the gate we built to keep our dog in. Because their dogs, our dog's a runner, and they're just really. We have a driveways on a hill, <laughs> and they have to park at the bottom because there's no room um, with our other two cars in the driveways. I'm almost done with this. I'm okay, being, I'm being I think the rest of us are about ready to move well, on. Well, you never know. <laughs> Feel free to say hi if you're on there, and uh, you know, comment if there's weird weirdness with the sound or anything like we had earlier. Here's Paul. So he has the, the stain going on, and you can see it makes the grain a lot more aggressive looking. And um, your octopus probably won't stand out quite as much. It might. We'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out. It's okay. It looks cool. <coughs> okay. So those are your two options, solid black or with the stain. Let's go ahead and prep to move along to painting the next background and I think the next background will be the whale painting so that's this one right here set this black one aside and this one so we're going to be going for this pick out which round you want to use for that make sure that the hole is in the 12 o'clock position and this one is cute I got the idea from I think something I saw on Pinterest where I think if I remember the painting had like a little kid in the boat and the whale was like right up under the boat touching the boat with the tip of its nose. I thought that was really cute. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to make this one with a similar feel with the moon in it because painting a tiny little boat with a tiny little kid in it would have been, well, it would have been copying someone else's work, but it would have been really hard <laughs> anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start getting ready for the next one. I want you to clean your brush off. So we're using that large brush again, your largest that you have of these two we're working with. Go for it. Don't wait for me. I'm not waiting for you. You're waiting for them? Nope. What you waiting for, girl? I was deciding if I was going to take a sip of beverage. <laughs> okay, Bahama Blue. Let's start with that. Oh, and what really? we're going to do okay. is we're going to draw a, the horizon line. So this water line across here goes straight across. So remember, make sure that the hole is at the top. And then we are going to start blending from that water line up. We're going to do the dark sky first, but we're going to blend this light blue into the dark. And it takes a little bit of work. So just really carefully go straight across about the middle. If it's a little higher than the middle or a little lower, that's okay. It'd probably preferably be a tiny bit higher just so you have room to fit the whole whale with the, the curved body and the tail. Now the tail ends up partly off the wood round, so I'm gonna just adjust this. I'm gonna real just quick. do the same thing on this. Oh boy, halfway across on a round circle. Okay, so I've got uh, a little bit, I know it's kind of hard, I've got a little bit of. Um, Bahama blue in my paintbrush. I'm going to dip it my brush in the dark blue kind of swirl the two together You'll, you'll get a color that's in between these two. So definitely uh, You've got light medium and dark. Let's go ahead and blend that upward from that horizon line. We drew on Try 
trying to hold this down but not cover what I'm doing. <laughs> This is actually kind of awkward. It is a little bit. It takes some getting used to. So you'll see I've got a definite line where this goes from light blue to that medium blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off excess paint off my brush. You don't need to wash it off. I'm going to pick up the Hama Blue on here and I'm going to sort of blend where those two lines meet. And it dries so fast that you might just kind of have to go back and forth between the medium blue and the Bahama Blue. What I want is just sort of a smoky fade. Like smoky eyes? <laughs> oh wait, you're going up. I was yeah. going down. Oof. Well, you're not listening then. <laughs> let's go for just, let's add a little more dark blue to our medium mix. So now your next strokes on here should be pretty dark. I'm just doing short choppy brush, stroke here, brush strokes here. And then for the last bit of my sky, I'm just going to go all dark blue. And then we'll blend these all together, if needed. It's funny because the wood has sort of a creamy tint to it, bordering on like slightly yellow. So in spots where the paint is thin, it can look kind of greenish with the blue. Oh, I see what top. happened. Yeah. I thought you were going down first and you're going up first. Yeah, we just went over that, didn't we? <laughs> no, no, no. I totally didn't. That's not what I was talking about. I meant totally a different thing. I thought you painted the bottom half first. I wasn't really watching what you were doing. <laughs> okay, so this is still wet, but it needs to be blended just a tiny bit more. I am going to wash my brush right now and dry it off pretty good. And then I'll just use that damp, almost dry brush to just sort of smooth the colors together. If you have to go back and add more paint to smooth anything out, it's always best to go with the lighter color blending into the darker color. So, you know, this can be kind of light around the horizon if needed because the moon is going to be there and the moon technically would lighten the sky right there around it. So right now mine almost looks like it would be fog sitting on top of the water. So uh, you should end up with something similar to that. Just basically a lighter blue fading into a darker blue. You don't necessarily get all three tones in this because it, it's small. We're, we're dealing with like maybe an inch to an inch and a half here. So it ends up being primarily the medium blue going into the dark blue. We want that dark blue there at the top because that will really make the stars pop. Pop, pow. Now everybody take a sip. Unless you... I always have to remind people in the studio because they get so concentrated on their work. It's like, remember. You're supposed to be sipping too. This blending business on these little wood rounds is not an easy thing. For someone like you, it's not. <laughs> I'm. That was mean. <laughs> no, you're not really a over blender. No. Your paint paintings are have their own special kind of a. Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, why am Genesis I? Oh, qual? Im <laughs> no. oh. Impressionistic quality. So there's not a whole lot oh, of yeah. over blending going on. And I think, well, I think that's why people love your paintings. I think that's the way this is going to turn out too, because it's okay. just not in my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Challenge for Paul. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so for the the bottom half of this, which ends up being the water with the whale in it, I did actually water down the Bahama blue. Same brush that you've been using. So here's what I usually do. I'll dip it in the water, put a little dot of water next to the Bahama Blue, and then stir some Bahama Blue into it gradually till you get a really watery paint color. You know what? I figured out my problem. I could have told you your problems long ago. Like that would be any different than a normal one. Actually, I like that. That looks really kind of galaxy-like. Okay, well, so my, what's your problem? My problem was is the round brush just wasn't working for me for that. Okay. So I switched to a flat brush. Okay. I'm using the round brush. And I'm just going to do that watered down. Now, this one is like the stain we were talking about. So it's, it's like a watercolor. You can add more pigment to it if you want. Like if you get your first strokes on there and it dries and you're like, eh, that's a little too sheer for me. You can definitely add more paint pigment to your little splotch of water there. And the wood just sucks the paint right up.
I'm going to clean up the edge of my waterline here. My one young dog, he's five, he's been obsessed with these wood rounds. And if he ever gets a hold of one, he's like, I don't know if he thinks it's a cookie or what. He's like in heaven. So I, I was packing up a box for someone the other day. And I had the whole box of, I have a box of like 50 of these. And I had it open on the coffee table. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> I know. I walked away for like two seconds. And I come back in and he's got all these strings out of the box and was starting to take the little discs out. <laughs> and let me guess. He got down so his front paws were down on the ground. His butt was in the air and his tail was wagging yeah. like, come and get me. Look what I did. Yeah, he got a squirrel yesterday. It was oh, no. kind of a sad day. It was a sad day at our household. Yeah. It's, it's tough because... It's their natural instinct for dogs that have a high prey drive, which ours does. It's a Shiba Inu. They're, they're bred for boar hunting <laughs> in Japan, but they're not big. Like, Hachi weighs less than 20 pounds. And, um, but they, they have that really high prey drive. And so I heard this horrible screaming in the backyard, and I thought, what? I thought it was on my daughter's video game. And she said, what's that noise? And then I was like, <gasps> what is it? So I went outside, and yes, they, they were, they, there was a squirrel. And we tried to rescue it, but it it passed on. I was holding it when it took its last breath. Yeah, at least so the dog sad. wasn't holding it in its mouth when it passed away. But yeah, that's always so sad. Can't hardly get mad at the dog, even though you want to be like, no, what are you brat? But you know, he seemed kind of depressed the last. He did. Of days. I think that he we told him over and over, like, no, 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 you don't do that. You know, they, you don't know, you know, they don't really understand you, but maybe they do a little bit. Well, I think he went outside <laughs> to bark at his buddy, and his buddy was gone. That's probably it. Yeah. That squirrel's, the squirrel's been, been taunting him for at, at all least spring, a year. All spring. We don't know. And last it, year? I don't know if it's the same squirrel each year, though. Probably is, but. <laughs> okay, so we are going to prep now to go to our third round to paint the background in on that one. We've got the backgrounds done on the black one for the octopus and the blue one for the whale. We'll set those aside. Well, this one's going to be fun. And this is a great one. Right here, it's got some really, really pretty coloring in the sky. And we're going to be blending from gold into pink into a tiny bit of purplish at the very top. And then the water is kind of a definite lavender. But we're not going to do all that right at once. This one goes probably the fastest out of all three, I think, if I remember right. Let's go ahead and make sure that you have all the blue out of your brush you've been using because we do want to start with this medium, or I'm sorry, it's, it's your largest brush today. And we are going to mix raw sienna, so, or your yellow ochre, whatever you want to call it, in, and white to make a little bit lighter version of this. It makes a prettier sky to have it lighter. This like is like 1970s gold and alone in the sky it's not as pretty. I tried it. <laughs> it's not as pretty as if you have it lightened up a bit. Oops, I got a little turquoise coming out there. I almost always will start realizing I didn't make quite enough paint. Although this is just a little swatch in the sky, so not a huge amount is needed. And I think I do need to have a little more gold in there. It's getting it a little bit too light. Okay. So on this one, we're going to remember uh, make sure that the hole is at the top. We're going to draw the horizon line just like we did on the last one. And this horizon line is really close to the color of the wood. If it's too close, you might pull a little more gold in, which I'm going to definitely do. And then I'm going to sweep in this upward angle. Just get a little, maybe half or quarter inch to half inch tall swatch of paint here. I feel like I want a little bit more white in mine. You do you, Paul. You I always do. do. You. <laughs> always do. All right, so let's take now, and we're gonna start blending into. We're gonna create sort of a peachy tone, and by mixing a little bit of this phthalo red the pinkish color into your beigey color you just made. You'll get kind of a salmon pink. Not quite peach. 
not quite pink, somewhere in between. And I'll just blend wet on wet paint at the top edge of this, going a little higher in the sky, another maybe quarter inch or so. And you can always brush back into that wet beigey paint. By brushing back, you're going to force those two to blend together. There we go. And now I'm going to not wash the brush, but I'll dip it in straight pink. And again, brush the wet on wet, brush back a bit just to mix that color right on your wood piece here by brushing back into the wet. I'm not pushing hard. When I brush back like this, it's like three hairs in some air, really light, light pressure, because that's going to help you blend it better. And just bring that pink all the way to the top. We got no music, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> I know, I wish we did have music. It's so weird. One of these days, I'll put together a little playlist that we can actually use on YouTube. Will you do it for uh, the Wookiee painting? Yeah, I mean, we can. We find... could do the, the. We can't the... use anything that's licensed. Yes, yeah, that's true. Because, like, literally, if we put some music on here that's licensed, you could too. YouTube actually... will be like, uh oh. <laughs> they actually will pull the video off. That one song, though. Do, 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 do. No, nope, can't do it. We could find one that's like a especially knockoff. Now, especially now that Disney owns the rights to it. Disney's, Disney's like, hardcore, man. They are pretty hardcore. hardcore when we talk about stuff like that. Okay, so I want to create a tiny bit of purplish at the top. Purple. This is 100% optional. It was just me being extra when I designed it. And to do that, I just am going to take the tiny bit of phthalo blue and mix it with the phthalo red. You'll see, I didn't even wash my brush. It's still got a little beige on it. It's still got a little bit of all the colors. But you'll see it makes a kind of dusty mauve color. Go ahead and brush that in. And you can decide. Get it, get some on there. And if you want it more of a deep purple, just mix a little more blue and pink in there to darken it. That's maybe a little dark, but I'll see if I can work with it. So this is really dark. <laughs> I want to blend that. I'm going to real quickly, while, before it dries, wash my brush and dry it off. And then I'll just sort of brush it downward brush lightly, it down. lightly. It's drying very, very fast. But by doing that super light and super fast while the paint is still just a little bit wet, now I have a definite blend. You can also use your fingertip and help that along too. What is that? It's a piece of cardboard. Remember that time I got a wheat thin with a piece of cardboard in it and I was convinced it was a mouse tail? Wait. Yes. Let me say that the other way. I got a wheat thin with a piece of cardboard in it, not a cardboard with a piece of wheat thin in it. Yes, it was a wheat thin with a piece of cardboard, a strip of, long strip of cardboard that was like embedded it right through baked, the middle. It was baked, baked right into in. the cracker. And we thought for sure it was a mouse tail. We were like, let's see. Nabisco. Not We're going to write the company and get lifetime Nabisco crackers. Not a sponsor, but they could be. <laughs> the camera just clicked. Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's not working. So we're going to make a lavender base for the water. It's okay. not like any of the colors we used up here. It's a little bit different. So it is uh, phthalo blue, phthalo red. We'll make a violet first. Phthalo. Phthalo. And it's such a weird color. It's like a the... Um, Pigment, it's like, it has this really long name, phthalo blah 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 something. I was reading a lot about paint pigments and mm -hmm. I read a whole book on mixing the way they used to make paint. It's fascinating to someone like me, I guess. <laughs> okay, so I have this deep purple, very similar to what we have at the top of this. Let's throw a little white in there, just a little bit at a time because it will lighten it real quick. And we want to aim for something in the lavender realm. Now it can be more pinkish lavender or more bluish lavender or just somewhere right in between. This looks pretty good to me and I'm just going to coat the whole, draw a line across the horizon here just carefully. If you need to use a small brush to do this, this is totally fine. And I'm just going to paint that whole bottom part in because we're going to be layering over the top, eventually. 
It's this grape bubblegum color. Yep. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it is actually, you're right. That, that reminds me of, it's a little darker than like, hubba bubba grape. That was my favorite flavor. You can turn it around as you paint the edges. Sometimes that makes it a little easier. If you need to water down your paint just a bit to get it more fluid, especially around these edges, feel free to do that. Or if you need to switch to the smallest brush, feel free to do that. Just to give yourself a little more Sometimes I like to leave a little bit of the wood showing around, but you don't have to. Like on, I think on this one, I, well, I probably didn't have a choice because of the bark in there. I'm trying to leave the bark showing. Personally. Okay. But I'm trying to get the... I mean, it's kind of hard to do perfect. Yeah. So this one's done. These, I mean, it's this part until we move on to the next step for the next That's one. That's it. Thanks for joining us <laughs> Thanks, tonight, guys. everybody. Thanks, <laughs> guys. Uh, these are really neat, though. I was going to tell you in the beginning, and I forgot. At Christmas time, I make these. And I have Mod Podge and glitter, so I'll sometimes paint some Mod Podge. Like, let's say, let's say this whale, I wanted to make it glittery. I would paint Mod Podge, which is clear, on the whale body, and then sprinkle, like, iridescent glitter or even blue glitter on there, and then just shake the excess off. So I, I give them a little glitter, and um, I hang it over a wine bottle, because it fits right over the neck perfectly. And that's what I do as housewarming gifts when we go to a party at someone's house, like, for Christmas. I remember I did mostly owls <laughs> this um, this past season and I had white iridescent glitter in the owl face and black glitter in the eyes. It was really cool. So that's something, like a lot of times people might wonder, what do I do with these? Well, you can hang them on your Christmas tree once that comes around. You can hang them on wine bottles in your house. You can hang them from your cupboard doorknobs, cupboard knobs. Can I, can I interject something real quick? Yes, fast? please. Since we're kind of like waiting for a second, a little transition, if you're watching the video and you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you're participating, make sure you click like. That helps yeah. us out a lot. It helps other people get a chance to see what we're doing. And it helps us uh, be able to uh, keep more videos coming your direction. So yep, like, click subscribe. Like. Click the bell for notifications if you want to see more videos, which we're posting yep. a lot of lately. Yep. Now that we're homebound. Yeah. And, <laughs> Housebound. Uh, we also, just real quick, we also started a kids subscription box, which is going to start shipping next month, and we're going to ship our regular subscriptions the first week of the month, and the kids subscriptions the middle of the month, and we'll just almost have like a little, well, I, th I think the kids, we're not going to do live stream, we're going to do pre-recorded videos for the kids. Yeah, and uh, so. I think the first painting will probably be a hedgehog, because um, there's a really popular hedgehog painting in the studio that the kids love, and I just kind of want to tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, give it a makeover. Since it's same, been... same deal, though. Two kids yeah. projects. And... Yeah. Two kids projects led by me or Paul. Yeah, I'll probably do some. Yep. And then uh, real quick, for those of you who are subscribers, I'm going to show you... I'm going to move this out of the way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what um, is coming in May's box. One project. So in May, I... I wanted to do some fun, different stuff. You guys have noticed that, especially in the last couple months where I've um, done painting on wood, painting on these ornaments and whatnot. And so we're gonna do gold leaf next month. And this is one of the birch boards. You guys have worked with these last time with the koi and everything, and the Mount Fuji. And this is sort of an abstract tree painting. And it has gold leaf adhered to it. It's the coolest, sparkliest, most fun thing. How are we doing? Am I um, lined up okay, Paul, on the... Well, you can see it. Yep. So, yeah, this, is, this will be really fun. So, that's coming in May. All right. Back to painting. All right, let's go back to our octopus. Octopus. So, we're going to leave these other backgrounds to dry. Let me put this. The nice thing about the wood, any of the wood projects that we paint on, is that the paint dries really fast. It's not so much that it dries, it soaks into the wood and it's not, it's not really on the surface the way it would be sitting on a canvas. So it's... Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, indeed. Something to that effect. So you don't have to do your octopus this color. If you want to do it this color, I'll guide you through how to do it. Oh, I'm going to do a purple one. Do, yeah. Pink. Yeah, you could do like the lavender or whatever. They change colors. Now this is so stupid. I feel so dumb. 
Well, I didn't know that octopus change colors. Okay. I watched a video with Greta, that's okay. our daughter, and this octopus was swimming around and hiding, and every time it landed on a rock to hide, it would like instantly change color. I was blown away. It's amazing. I had no idea because I'd seen them in person, like at the Oregon Science, mm -hmm. um, whatever that is down there by the Oregon Coast Aquarium. And they're always kind of this pinkish, fleshy pinkish color. Yeah. And so I just thought that's what color they were. <laughs> so I feel so like, that's like okay. I just was in a coma and just woke up. You were like, I learned about this when I was this old. Greta thought I was so stupid. <laughs> you know what? Though? But you know, that's what teenage girls do to their moms. <laughs> yeah, everything we do is stupid. Yes. Okay, so for this color, I mixed Bahama yeah. Blue and raw sienna. I thought and the you know, dog I'm going to use my larger out. brush to mix the colors, but I'm going to use my smaller brush to apply them. And you can play around with what mix you like. I did equal parts to start, and it makes this uh, kind of seafoam green color. So if you decide, hey, you know, I want mine with a little more Bahama Blue in it, try that out and see what you like. If you wanted to do the like a light pink octopus, this with white makes a great pink. Or you guys saw the purple, that would be an option too. You could do a, a light blue. I mean, they change color, so I guess anything goes. Okay, so I have a lot of paint on this brush. I don't really want to waste it. So what I'll do, let me pull this over real quick. I just kind of twist it off. I'm frugal with paint. <laughs> and then I'm going to wash this brush and go to my little guy. We get to do a bit of drawing here. If you feel like you want to use a pencil first, go for it. But I'll, I'll guide you through a way that makes it easy without a pencil. I think I had Van Gogh going for six months before I finally like got pencils and was like, let's try this. <clears throat> and I don't use them very often just because I think if it's taught right, you don't need it. So what, speaking of teaching it right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, like, we're going to start like we're drawing a heart, but instead of, like, curving down, like, if it's easier for you to curve down like this, it gets covered anyway, so that wouldn't be a big deal. But I'm going to just draw these first, like I'm drawing a heart or, like, a big, like, rounded M shape or, like, the way you used to draw birds when you were a kid. And notice he's off-center. So Wait, he's, you don't still paint birds that way? Um, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> I mean, I've been teaching them that way in the studio for like eight years now. now so you know. let's pay attention to the the loophole here. And I have this first bump. It's just kind of lined up with it. And it's, you know, it's pretty close below it. So I'll go ahead and start. And just right under this hole where the twine goes, I'm just going to do a little rainbow shape. A frown. <laughs> Our little wood round is frowning at us. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> and then I'm going to do a matching one like this. As matchy as you can get it. Don't worry if it's not exact. So here's my weird little bird. That, like the, the birds we drew when we were in kindergarten. Or if you were Paul, like when you were in Van Gogh last month. <laughs> well, technically nobody was in Van Gogh last <laughs> month. We're getting to that point. Yeah. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> okay, so then this ignore the tentacles. That's what I want you guys to think of this without all of this going on because I don't want you to stress out. This is easy. We're going to take this line and bring it down here at an angle. Easy enough. Let's do it. Here we go. Down and then off the side. It looks at first like we're drawing a slug. <laughs> And then on this side, I'm also going to go down at an angle, but I start to, what I want to do is I'm going to go down and then curve a little more dramatic curve that's out towards the side. So follow me down here. And then I'm going to curve way up like this. Sometimes when you're using this small brush, you need a drop of water mixed with your paint to make it a little more fluid for drawing with the brush. So feel free to do that. So then right here, I'm going to parallel this line. Just oh, are quick. you using a small brush? Yeah. Holy. Well, you were texting. You weren't listening. I was not texting. <laughs> and if I was, you shouldn't toss me under the bus like that. 
The wheels on the bus go bump over Paul. Bump over Paul. Hey, now you're copyright infringing because that's my song. <laughs> okay, and then I want to create this little triangle here. So this is just going to go straight down. And we're going to leave this gap black. If you accidentally paint over to it, over it, it's super easy to just paint black right back over it. So don't, don't uh, get anxiety about any mess ups like that. And then I'm going to parallel this line like this. And I'll create another triangle like this. So what we're drawing here is we're just seeing the base of these tentacles as they're starting. And then luckily we don't have to paint the rest of them because they're down here somewhere where we can't see them. And then one more parallel of this line, maybe shorter. Mm. And another like triangular thing. So that's all we're going to do at first. So all you need are these, and yours might be shaped different than mine. That's okay. Mine's probably shaped slightly different than the original. I tried to copy the original, but it's never going to be exactly the same. Especially when you're painting on the wood. Mm-hmm. In life. <laughs> so all we're going to do now is we're going to color this in solid. Leave the triangles black. You can start up here. If you feel like this is painstakingly slow with your little brush, go ahead and pick up your bigger brush. There is something that's kind of fulfilling about painting with tiny brushes kind of. on little things. Speaking of tiny brushes and little things, we just, I think we might have told you last week, but we just released our watercolor kit and most of those projects are um, smaller on six by nine paper and... It's not that much smaller. You're using a small brush. In fact, I'm going to grab one in a little bit because I have it in the kitchen. And I'd like to show you the, probably the first one I'm going to do is a lighthouse. I don't know why. Maybe it's just, it's psychological not being able to go anywhere. Like I love going to the beach. I love going to the Oregon coast and we haven't been able to at all. And we literally live like an hour away from the, wouldn't you say like an hour and 10 minutes an or so? An hour and 10 minutes to yeah. Lincoln City, yeah. And uh, so we do we go there. We were just down there in February. Yep. Though. We were in Yahats, which is a little further. But we uh, we go down there sometimes just for the day because it's such a short drive. And so I think I was feeling like, I miss the sun and the sand. Well, in Oregon, we don't get a lot of sun at the beach. Actually, the, I've heard that the best times for sun is like late September, early October. Absolutely, yes. It's rainy here a lot of times during that. But then the... It pulls the good weather in to the coast from what I have heard. <clears throat> so if when you get this done, if you feel like, ah, oh, the triangles didn't end up big enough, it's really easy to come back and paint some black right back over there. And if you feel like, like I feel like I can see some of the brush strokes from coloring it, I can see through it a bit. I might take my larger brush and just give a quick main, a quick second coat to the main part of the body here to make it just a little more opaque. And I guess I can get the tentacles. All right, so we're gonna keep working on this one. We're gonna, while we've got that color fresh on our palette, we'll get the extra tentacles drawn. One by one, I'll guide you through. It's not hard. Um, we do some fun little curly cue stuff, so I guess uh, get your whimsical thoughts going. Think about like Tim Burton movies. <laughs> get some whimsy. <laughs> oh, you know what? I missed that. Never mind. Ignore you keep me. missing a lot of things, but I noticed you keep picking up your phone. Why do you keep having to point that out? That's actually really rude. <laughs> I'm checking because we've got orders coming in. <clears throat> okay, so we are we going to... We just got to... a brand new subscriber, and I was nice. looking to see where they're at because we're starting to get people from around the country, yeah. not just Oregon. We talked about getting a, a map with, for pins. Okay, so we're going to take this one, like pretend it curls way out here, and then at the top here it's coming back in to the picture. So this is like we're looking through a um, camera lens or something. At um, Maybe camera lens is not a good... It has to be something circular. 
Fish eye a lens. Spyglass. <laughs> Looking at this through a spyglass. A porthole in a submarine. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna take this. I'm gonna real light pressure here. Curl it down. Just doing one little single line. One little skinny single line, and it could keep curling. I mean, these guys can. From what I understand, they can squish themselves through a tiny little hole. So their bodies are like super manipulative. So you can twirl this in as far as you want. And then uh, I want to make this a little thicker here where it comes out of the side. And then it just gets thinner at towards the tip of the tentacle. So it's like he's flexing. He's, he's got a, a girl octopus floating by and it's flexing. Because that's really what it looks like. He's got both arms up. Tentacles. Tentacles. Got both tentacles up. So let's match that with this one over here. It's about the same size um, of tentacle. And we're just, we don't see the bottom part curling up. We're just going to do a little curly cue down. This is fun. I loved this one. I was super happy with how it turned out. So I'll just thicken this up again where it comes out of the side of the round and then skinnier on the end. Take your time, just sort of clean up the shapes. Remember you can touch up anything with black and if you uh, need to let it dry first, just Give it a blast with a blow dryer or pause the video and let it dry. It'll dry super fast and then touch up with black. All right, let's do the this one right here, this back one. So we have four that show the remaining four are off the side of the our surface here. Let's do this one. It just sort of curls in here like so. And then thicker where it comes out of the body, thinner at the ends. This is his short little stubby Remember arm. you can turn this any direction you need. Yeah, yeah, it's in the back, <laughs> so. Perspective. Yep. We all need a little dose of perspective lately. Yeah. All right, I think we've been getting it. Uh-huh. Indeed. So then I have had barely enough room to fit this little guy back here on. And um, whatever room you have left, just tuck another one in there, curling out from the body. Well, that got a little wonky, but it'll work. There we go. So this one's behind. It's one of the back tentacles. It's, every time this dries, it gets a little more see-through. There. Okay, that's working pretty good. <laughs> Work. Work it, girl. I'm debating if I want to do stars right now. What, is he up on a rock or something? Yeah, he's a space octopus. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> he's, Heard about this. He's octopus. Sentient being. <laughs> They are sentient beings. They, uh, so I got my daughter to stop eating octopus for sushi because I told her about how they're sentient beings and can remember all kinds of things and they're really smart. I have to tell you guys this story. Maybe I've said it before. I don't think I've said it before in GoBox video. I'll talk about it while we're doing stars. Let's do stars. Let's talk about it. So I, I use the very tip of the bristles. Now I know in the past you guys have seen us use the handle of the brush to do dot stars everywhere. That's perfectly okay to do. On this one, I wanted really tiny specks of stars. So I opted to use the very tip of the bristles, but you do you, go with what feels better and just put lots of tiny little dots everywhere. Make sure you get between the tentacles and all of that. And I'll tell you about this funny story that we learned, were we at the Seattle Aquarium or was that Boston? Yeah, that was Seattle. Yeah, so we, um, one year in the summer, we decided to just take the kids up to Seattle because we hadn't spent much time up there and I don't even know if either of them had been up there. 
And we wanted to ride the Ferris wheel, we wanted to visit the aquarium, and we wanted to uh, go into Space Needle, all that touristy stuff. So we bought a city pass. And it uh, allowed us to do all those things. And when we went to the aquarium, it was super cool. And the guy was telling us there that about, is it every two years they have to change? Get they have to out? change the locking mechanism or, or the latch mechanism. No, they have to get a new They have to get a new octopus. octopus. Yeah. Right, yeah. So they d discovered um, their early morning crew would come in and uh, several of the tropical fish would be missing. And from, the, from the tropical tank. From the tropical mm -hmm. tank. And they couldn't figure it out what was going on. And then they came in one morning, uh, I think a little earlier, and there was a wet streak all the way across the floor from the octopus tank <laughs> to the tropical fish display. And they determined that the octopus had figured out not only how to climb out of the tank, which takes them a little while to figure out, but how to get what he needed and get back in the tank before the crew came in. Yeah, he figured out how basically how to open the <laughs> tropical, the access. Stealthy. <laughs> and so um, they said it takes them about two years to figure out how to uh, get out and do all that stuff. And uh, so every two years they change them out, <laughs> get a new one. I just thought that was so funny. I'll never forget that story. But then when people say, you know, they're sentient and they, you know, they have thoughts, feelings, all that, I'm like, yeah, I think they really are based on that story. They're pretty smart. They're like the Maze Runner. Or just really hungry, the Maze Runner. We just watched the Maze Runner for the first time. That was actually a pretty cool movie. Let's see, I do have a few stars tucked in here. So we watched the first and the second, and then tonight... We're probably going to watch the third. Wow, you're going like star crazy. I know. Um, I was surprised our daughter kept saying she wanted to watch it. And she never like is really into that kind of thing. That those kind of movies or anything. So I was like, well, how come you want to watch it so bad? It's like, well, I'm supposed to have read this book. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get it. I, was, I did that senior year humanities class. I was totally Grapes supposed wrath. to read the book. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Burke. That's what I did. <laughs> you know, I think that um, the pace we're going, rather than switching to the next round, like everything dries so fast, especially under these lights. Let's go ahead and add some of the color to the body here. And first I wanna add the eyes. And if I remember right, yes, the eyes were smallest brush and I mixed raw sienna so this butterscotch color here and the dark blue you don't need much at all so see what a tiny little pool of that color i'm making it's going to give you a army greenish color i probably put a little more raw sienna in there than blue because i really wanted it on the green side twist off your brush as you pull it along to knock off any excess paint pigment and then i'll just kind of redip the tip of the brush into the paint. And then we're just gonna draw two little circles that will become the eyes. Right under these humps. Remember you can pause anytime if you're still working on stars. It feels like I'm going way too fast. Please pause the video. And now I'm going to add some textural color to the body of the octopus. Now that's not, we do put these dark green splotches or dots, freckles, whatever you want to call them. It's that color that we just used. So we will make it again, or if it's not dried out, you can use that same one. But for now, I want to take my smallest brush, clean it off, get all the green off of it. And I'm going to use just raw sienna. And I literally will just paint little, it's almost like I'm doing little X's all over the body. So it's just a textural thing. And you can go between the eyes, even a little bit up in here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. 
Make sure you get. I was gonna say maybe. A make little sure you make the sound some of effects. the tentacles. Um, we're gonna have the suckers showing, and they're kind of like on the top edges of these. So like I would put the yellow in here. I actually looked up. I thought they had a special name. The suckers, and they don't. They're just called the suction suction cups. So the suckers. Well, I mean, <laughs> keep it simple. They probably have a Latin name. I'm sure somewhere. there's some Latin scientific name. But when I was writing up the instructions on the, the sheet you guys got, <laughs> I was like, oh, do I call them just suckers? <laughs> do, 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 do. Now. Now. <laughs> so. So. <laughs> Inside joke. You guys will never get it. And I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> employee. Something employees would say. Okay, so uh, if you have this done and you want to soften it a bit, which you can do if you feel like it's a little overkill, you can take a little bit of that body color we had, which was that sagey green, and just sort of dab it back in there. Here or there. Oops. If needed, but I think when we add the freckles, it'll all come together good. So I'm not going to do too much of that. I do like the texture. Let's go ahead, while we've got that um, wheat color, the raw sienna, let's go ahead and paint the eyes in solid. They get a slitted eyeball, or pupil, later on. For now, we're just going to do gold. Unless you have some other color in mind, please feel free to change up colors. When I design a painting, sometimes I'm just thinking whatever color sings to me in the moment. <laughs> oh, it's so warm. This is fun. I know. Don't you like painting small like this? You never do, so this probably is really fun for you. Now I'm going to add, while this is while I have this fresh batch of this dark green color, I'm going to go ahead and do the freckles. They're done just like we did the stars, only maybe a quicker little succession of dots because you can have them really clustered together. Get a couple above the eyes here and there. I totally thought this had Metallica paint. Uh, Metallica. <laughs> it does. It's got back in black. It does. <laughs> That's actually ACDC. Oh, you're right. It's black. The black album. Fade to black. <laughs> Fade to black. I'm just going to stop talking right now. Know your metal, Jenny. <laughs> I should know my metal. You are the major I Metallica mean, fan. We have Kirk Hammett and James Hetfield Funko Pop sitting on the shelf right mm. behind us. Metallica, by the way. I knew who they were, but apparently I didn't know the right name to their Fade to Black song. Dot, 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 dot. Lots of freckles. Hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. This is all part of their camouflage, I bet. <laughs> Mine looks like a Muppet. <laughs> it totally does, but it's got that. Yours is more of like that squid kind of look to it. No, is I looked up a picture of Octopus. Oh, you did? Yeah. You're cheating. It's okay to use photographic reference. Yep, we do it all the time. All the time. I'm gonna use multiple different colors of freckles to create a specific effect that I'm looking for. I'm still trying to decide what the second project is going to be for the Maybox. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get that. Oh, you're gonna do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Well, good. I was thinking, um, we've done River Mountain. I'll figure something. Maybe I'll do a waterfall. Oh, that would be nice. We've Pretty done cool. waterfalls. Just but... one. We've just done Tokoki. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or I could do a mountain. I'm going to um, paint the slitted eye because this these are probably pretty close to dry. Dry enough to paint the um, green. It's the same dark green. 
and literally just horizontal line dab it on paint it on whatever however you get it on there right through the middle this look like kermit the frog guys mine looks like a muppet too <laughs> well it's pretty interesting that you would say that i'm here glad i could join you this evening jenny oh my gosh it'd be really funny to do a whole sesame street we could totally do it I think we should. <laughs> so what's our next step? What are we going to do? I'm really looking forward to painting this next painting. We're going to put these guys aside. And we're going to pick up the whale. Let me find the page with the whale. We're going to get the moon painted on there. And the stars. We'll do the moon first. So we're back to here. Here's the um, original that's in the photograph that you have. And... It's just a half moon, half circle right in the middle. And if you look at the rings, like I think I remember on this one, I traced a ring. So it was like, oh, that's perfect. So you can do that if you have one that doesn't look too lumpy or weird. And I want to use my smallest brush, white paint, obviously. And right about the middle, middle-ish. I've got a ring that looks like it's like in the right area. So I'm going to sort of trace that. Yeah, that's actually really kind of a handy little handy thing for doing the moon. I would love to hear your guys' feedback too on how you like painting on these. If you thought these are useful, that's something you want to see in one of the go boxes again with different paintings. Um, let me know. Let us know that because um, we're always loving the feedback on projects and whether or not we, you want to do more or if you want to do something different. So, okay. I've got the shape drawn in, and now I want to fill the moon in. And this is where every time I paint a moon over a dark background, I use the dark background to my advantage where I want to, I leave some lighter bits of paint or even uncoated areas to look, make it look like there's the craters on the moon. So like I'll do that right now. I'll just start by going around the outside of the moon, which is solid paint. And then maybe I'll just leave a big open space, a splotch like that. I am going to put some paint in it. I don't want to leave it just the background color. But here, what I'm doing here is I'm just running my paintbrush out of paint. And when I run it out of paint, you get thin spots where you do see the background color through. And that can give the suggestion or impression of craters. And then even though my paintbrush it looks like there's no paint on it. There's there's a little, and so I'll come in here and kind of dab lightly on that spot I left as the crater. And then I've got this cool um, moon that I didn't really try very hard to make to paint craters or anything. It just they just happened. Just happened, and I might come through and touch up some spots with some bright white. I feel like mine little dabs that. and dots. Especially around the edges. I like to make it nice and bright and solid around the edges. There. Pretty good. We are going to paint some moon reflection on the water, but that's after we put the whale on. We can do a little bit right now, and then we'll do some more after the whale. So what I want to do for moon reflection is I want to take and dip the brush in water, put a little water, a little bead of water next to the white. Maybe mix a tiny bit of white into it. Dab your brush on the towel before you touch the, the ornament with it, and that way you know if you have too much or too little paint. So I made like a color wash, similar to what we did on the, uh, what did we do that on? I guess we didn't do it. Yeah, similar to what we did on the water here. Duh. I am not functioning on all cylinders tonight. <laughs> I, I got on my treadmill for the first time in months today. We moved it into a space that's a little more usable. So I'm just going to, I'm just going back and forth. I'm going to come down here just a bit so yeah we moved it to a spot that's a little more usable for me and I got on it and I I did the I set it to burn a large amount of calories <laughs> 
And I am so tired. My legs feel like rubber bands. It was no, good no for me, though. No easing yourself in, huh? I felt good. At, no way. Not, not the way I've been eating. I can't ease myself in. And then tonight I ate, like, four slices of pizza. I <laughs> eased my way into a bag of Doritos. Yeah. All the way through it. It's all about balance. <laughs> I think I've eaten more Doritos in the last month we than I've eaten in, like, so the last many Doritos. Like, five like, years. We could be a sponsor for Doritos. Not a sponsor, but they could be. <laughs> yeah, we have... Why is that? I don't know why. We just like we bought they, they, one bag at the yeah. beginning of quarantine, and then we're like every time we go to the store, like, hey, get another bag of those. Hey, make sure you get the nacho cheese flavor. Hey. <laughs> I don't there know is the it. one flavor I did not like. The sweet brought. chili ones. Yes, well, like the those. sweet chili ones are the only ones that are vegan. Oh. So I eat vegetarian. You mean I haven't been eating vegan Doritos? No, I eat vegetarian most of the time, so that's kind of a. Well, Doritos are vegetarian. Uh, yeah, hey, they're vegetarian. I try to keep it on the, the up and up. It's the nacho cheese. Yeah. Okay, let's paint stars. We know how to do that already from the octopus painting. Tip, very tip of the bristles of the brush. Or if you want to use the handle part like you're used to, please go ahead and do that. I think the downside to the handle is they get too big on this. Too big. One thing that if you are going to use the handle of the brush, it helps to uh, dot the handle off a bunch of times on your palette before you touch the wood round with it. Then you start off with smaller stars. And these can be a little frustrating too if your brush maybe has gotten a tiny bit frayed on the ends. I did make it so that people can order individual replacement brushes. Nice, I saw that, yeah, that's great. So know that if you're, the number four brushes, the little round ones, run out the fastest. If you take good care the of them, they should last quite a while, but. When you wash them while they're still wet, just reshape them with your fingertip. Just pinch them together. Um, but yeah, if you decide you need a, a new one and want to order it from us, the they're biggest like four fifty each. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty cheap. The biggest issue with the smaller ones is when you leave them sitting in your water jar, they tend to deform. Yeah, you found a way to fix that though with like hot water, right? Yeah, you can do it. Um, you can kind of rinse them, and once they're clean and dry, you can. Because they are a synthetic material, they can be rinsed in like near boiling water, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll soften it up. And then you can take it out and kind of reshape it a little bit carefully so you don't burn yourself. But mostly just uh, getting it so that it's um, it'll make it more pliable. And then even just holding the brush so it's point you know hanging will help. Yeah. So. So. I don't know if this is the same with you, but when, when I first started painting, um, I started with acrylic paint, and then when I got to college, I started in oils, because that's what the class was that I took, and I... don't I think that class was specific, was it? I think it was. I fell in love with oil painting, because it just was like, oh, this is, this is what I've been waiting for, and... Um, I know that when I use acrylic paints, I like to use the synthetic bristle brushes, but when I paint with oils, I like to use the natural. I think it kind of depends like on what. Like bristle. Yeah, I like boar. Well, I like those with the acrylics too, but it kind of just depends on what effect you're trying to get out of yeah. it. Yeah. What school was it that the brush guy would come around to? Was that Portland? It was both, wasn't it? I don't remember. I know it was at Portland. Okay. Yeah. Portland Community College, if you're yep. wondering. He would come around and sell brushes at, like, really low prices, and us poor college students were like, the brush guy's here, whispering all the time, hey, the brush guy's here, the brush guy's here. <laughs> now, if you're if you're looking at brushes, and I know I've, I've talked, we've talked about this before, but for acrylics, you know, a lot of times people see these sable brushes, and they want to spend the money on good sables. I don't, I don't think there's any point to it for acrylics or oils. It's definitely worth the Works investment for, for watercolor. watercolor yeah. But for the, I mean, you if you want to. I like synthetics. I yeah. really do. Especially for the, like, you could do sable in, like, a finer brush, though. Sable, are those, like, little, they're a little, like, mongoosey looking they're, things? Yeah, they're, like, in the ferret family. Interesting. They're, I think, what they're uh, really closely related to yeah. a mink, mink yeah, I believe. Yeah, they're cute. But again, they're getting further and further away from using any kind of animal hair for things like that. They don't have to kill the animals for the animals. No, they don't. Yeah. But and they don't usually, but this yeah. is just the ethical treatment yeah. stuff of them. True. They don't need no haircuts. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. 
So let's go ahead now while we're while we're in in the whale land here. Let's go ahead and paint the shape of our whale. And I've got my instructions here. You can see the shape it starts out with. And we are going to mix um, phthalo blue, which is your dark blue in Bahama, to make a color that it's dark. It's very it's very similar to that um, medium tone we did in the sky. Well, I tell you what, you're way better at the stars. <laughs> You're just a little more heavy-handed. It's okay. So I'm going to scrape off a little... Uh, you don't need a ton of paint, so don't worry about making a ton. Uh, I'll scrape off a little phthalo blue and then about half as much Bahama blue. Let's see where that gets me. I need it a little darker than this, so the Bahama blue light lightened it up quite a bit. And I'm going to bring back some phthalo blue into that. The color we're looking for is a nice deep blue that's not quite as dark as this. All right, I'm pretty close. I think this is about what I want. <clears throat> Maybe a tiny more dark blue. Stir, stir, stir. So when I stir paint like this, I, it gets all over the brush. And I was showing you earlier how a lot of times I just twist and pull. And that helps knock off excess paint. And then I'll redip the tip of the bristles in the fresh mixed paint. And let's draw. Here, I'll put this over by you. Let's draw. So decide what point you want your whale, the tip of the nose, to touch the moon. Do you want it right in the middle? Do you want it more over to the side? What makes sense with the layout of your uh, moon and everything? I think mine pretty close to the middle works, so I'll just put a little dot there just to mark it off. That is helpful. And then I'm going to think about this like I'm drawing an almond shape. So on this side, on the right side, we're going to curve way down to about here. Almost to the bottom, but not quite. And then on this side, we're going to come down about three quarters, two thirds of the way. So you can see it, it's like an almond shape. This side just hooks around a little more. Kind of looks like we started to draw like one of those cursive J's. <laughs> a fish hook. <laughs> And then this I'm going to take and I'm going to curve down and I'm going to parallel the bottom of the round. I'll move my brush so I can show you guys. And then this is going to get real skinny really fast and match that curve. When we fill it in, we can reshape everything. Let's uh, fill in half of the wheel. So, in fact, you can just draw a dividing line right down. And then when we get down to where everything curves, we're, we're going to color the whole tail part solid blue. And then this left half here, solid blue. So it's mainly just the stomach part of the wheel. It's going to be the light color. And then the whale tail. Let's What's see. a whale of a tail? I've got a little sheet of cardboard paper here. So the tail is shaped like a wine glass at first. This is if I was looking straight ahead at it, like a whale tail coming out of the ocean. And then this just comes down and is filled in. So let's, let's do that again. Think of it like you're drawing a wine glass. If I were to connect that, then I've got a little wine, wine goblet. <clears throat> but we're not going to connect it. We're bringing these two down and meeting them down here. I think you got one thing on your mind. <laughs> wine! Okay, so this is a, a different angle than what I drew on the paper. So usually what I do for ease of like thinking about it, for me anyway, I turn it this way. So I'm, I am drawing... In an upright fashion here, I'm drawing the right side of the wine glass. I might mix a drop of water with my paint because I'm working on such a small scale and the paint feels a little too thick. So I need a little more fluid for drawing. And then this side I'll draw part of the left side of the wine glass. It's going to go off the side of the round. So this is going to curve down. You can make it fancy if you want. So I kind of curved 
almost like a paisley shape. It kind of curves in and up to the tip of the tail here. We saw some amazing whales in Hawaii uh, last, not this past January, but January 2019. They were super active while we were there. It was so neat. You know, that was the Just trip that I... playing so that much. I didn't have my glasses. <clears throat> yeah, you didn't. I saw that. I could see things happening, but I couldn't make it out. <laughs> okay, so off the side of the round with that. And usually I have to clean up something. For me, I'm cleaning up this curve here. I might curve the belly out just a little more. If you end up painting into the belly a little, it's okay because we're going to color that in with... We're going to go over the top of this Bahama Blue with it anyways. There we go. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and paint this little dorsal fin back here. It's at the base where it just starts curving out. And it's literally just a little triangle to the side here. And we'll paint these fins after we paint the belly. And I don't want to paint the belly yet because I want all this to dry. So we're going to set these guys aside. They're really close. This one's really close to done. And let's go to our, you can pause the video if, if you're still working on whale tail or whatnot. whatnot. We're going to go to our sunset one. Sunset along the bay that sort of looks like the Columbia Gorge. <laughs> Alright, let me find my page for that. <clears throat> Wyland would be proud. Yeah, Waylon with the whale paintings. Is he on Channel 10? P he used to be, I don't know. Um, I don't know if he <clears> still <throat> is. It seems like uh, last time I checked, they kind of were back to just Bob. Oh. Okay, so these back hills, we're going to paint those first. Then we're going to paint this lower hill. Then we're going to streak on some of the sunset colors into the water. Okay. Everything with the small brush. <clears throat> For the back hills, it's... Phthalo red and phthalo blue. Just straight up mix equal parts. These two, because we want a deep, dark violet. I'm making a mess. Actually, maybe it's you. You're making... No, I probably, I probably make more of a I mess. I am not a me very big mess maker when it comes to palettes. <laughs> last week was... Yeah, last week was epic. It pretty was. An epic palette. Okay, so I'm just making a really deep, deep violet. And that is perfect. It was about equal parts of... The red to blue, or pink to blue, magenta to blue, whatever helps you visualize what color it is. This one and this one. Twist off the brush a bit if you've got a lot of paint on it. Redip the tip of the bristles. Pick up a little paint. And let's paint some gentle background hills. Now they really are like the Coast Range hills, which are not super sharp um, high peaks like Mount Hood or... Um, Almost like the Olympic Fuji. Peninsula too. <laughs> yeah. So I just usually, I'll start a little bit above here and just make a series of rolling hills. Come down close to the water, come back up. Remember hills are, like mountains and things are quite a bit wider than they are tall. That's how you don't end up with uh, the Great Pyramids. <clears throat> easy to do. It's easy to end up with like a witch hat or gnome hat looking thing. But it just takes practice and you'll get better and better. Now I want to... Um, Draw off, border off the water with a line that goes straight across the top. That way I'm bordering off a shape to fill in. And in fact, sometimes for me, I like pulling down, pulling towards myself. So I turn this. And there. Now I can fill that in. I'd be curious to know, too, um, what you guys would, if you want to do some more of these, what would you like to paint on them? Do you want to do, like, animal faces, like owls and bears, like woodland animals, that kind of thing? I've seen some of these with mushrooms that were super cute with a, a like, had a starry, black background, starry sky, and some red and white mushrooms. Just cute and fun. Give me ideas. I love ideas. Working small, you can do a lot of stuff. Oh, what if we did a series that had like a like a, a toadstool, a gnome, and <laughs> something else? That might be fun. 
Okay, so I know I gave these in a, a different order, but I want to actually have a streak the color on the water next, just so that we're not trying to fit those lighter streaks in between two patches of dark wet paint. So wash your brush off really good. Dry it off on the towel. I always pinch the towel around my brush and pull the brush out. That helps knock off any excess paint pigment. And I'm going to take a little of just plain raw sienna. So that's just your gold. This one right here. Just your regular old gold. And we're going to just streak it down on the water, back and forth. See if it's too gold. If it's too gold, mix a tiny bit of white with it, but not too much. Because we don't want it to really like stand out and, and punch right out of the water. We want it to be sort of subtle. So in fact, I might even water down the paint. I'm kind of going... Super subtle as I go for a huge amount. I'm kind of going opposite of that right now. Mine's watered down, so when this water evaporates and dries, the paint will actually be a little lighter than it looks, like a little uh, more transparent. And then I'm going to put a little tiny bit of pink mixed in with that color. So I mixed it on my palette. Oh. I'm gonna I just mixed these two together with some water. Pink, pink, the, the golden yellow, some water, maybe a tiny dash of white. What we really are doing here is just showing that, yeah, yeah, the, the sky is reflecting on the water. We didn't forget about that part. <laughs> so it's just a little glow on the water. Make sure you sip yourself some beverage. I'm drinking Fresca. And you know, it's super refreshing in this very hot room. It's a good thing we didn't wear pants tonight. We'd be really hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were talking about that before we went live. We were like, let's tell them we're not wearing pants. I just did. <laughs> but if we If you are. weren't wearing pants on this metal chair. That would be, that would suck. <laughs> that would suck. Okay. I think we need better chairs. We do need better chairs. Like, uh, really comfy ones. <laughs> like Let's... the ones that look like racing car seats and be like... Totally. I don't know about Recaro. that. Recaro. Yeah, those ones we saw at Staples. Those are gaming chairs. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we're going to paint this lower dark hillside. And it's darker than this one back here. In fact, it is black and phthalo blue. So your indigo blue and black. About equal parts. I'm stealing the palette again so I can show the mix. In fact, they're right next to each other. Hey, that's convenient. Okay, so we'll, we'll make them meet up. And the color is going to look black. If you were to brush it out though, you definitely see a indigo blue tinge to it. If you, just, if you opted to use solid black, I don't think it would be that much of a difference. And then I'm just going to do just a hint of a little land here, just somewhere I can plant trees. Somewhere you could stand for the photo ops. <laughs> this one will kind of go up so there's a smaller gap between here and here just to make it look more interesting and less planned out. And then we'll fill this area in all the way down to the... Now we're in my wheelhouse. Wood bark. This is my comfort zone. <laughs> How'd your wheel turn? Oh, <laughs> what's your wheel doing? That is his fin, his dorsal fin, because... Orcas have tall, skinny fins. Oh. <laughs> okay. I know it looks like he's like, like <laughs> splaying out funny, like he's being dramatic or like. Can we show it? <laughs> you can. I mean, it, at, right now it looks like he's having like a very uh, theatrical, but yeah, like melodramatic. He's like, I believe I can fly. <laughs> I feel so bad singing that song now, though. Oh. Too bad somebody else didn't write it. <laughs> right. Such a great song. R. Kelly. Okay, so I'm going to um, fill this in. Huh, okay. If you need to mix a drop of water with your paint around these edges, it really helps you to be able to clean those up. I feel up. like I need a little bit more just pure black in this. Okay. So there is the bottom part where I'm going to plant my fir trees. You might end up with two, you might end up with one, you might like it as it is without any. It's totally up to you. Um, I could go up a little higher here maybe to make it make sense for another tree to be there. But I do but like to show a good chunk of the water. This water is way bluer, that's funny. tree can grow anywhere. A tree can grow just about anywhere. And I think we could go ahead and finish this one up in just a few minutes. 
Let's go ahead and wash the brush while these two landforms dry. Stars. I really tried very hard to leave stars off of this one, but man, I'm like the star queen. <laughs> I love painting stars. It's, I guess, an addiction. Maybe it's like my signature. So feel free to leave the stars off. I did put the stars, I kept them primarily in the upper dark part of the sky because down here where the sun is still setting, you wouldn't see as many. These are just waking up. Somebody's waking up. <laughs> no, you can't say that because that's that Saturday Night Live. You just ruined my joke. <laughs> How was it a joke? <laughs> because people are going to look it up and realize I was being dirty. So you can uh, even press your fingers. See how I pressed my finger and I picked up a bunch of stars? While they're still wet, you can create more using your finger like a rubber stamp. I probably could have showed you that earlier, but we wanted our other ones to be a little more I'm going to go less on the stars on this one. Yeah, I could have probably gone less. The stars Maybe just... I couldn't have. Maybe it's just like my... They're the bane of my existence. To quote the little kid from the Polar Express, the stars just aren't working out for me. He didn't really say the stars, though. He said Christmas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't remember that? Christmas just do. doesn't work out for me. Yeah, I do remember. You gotta All stay right. on your toes when I'm around because I'm gonna reference stuff and you gotta be <laughs> ready to know where I'm going. What kind of a co-host am I? <laughs> right? Okay, let's get a little greenery down here. And that is phthalo blue. Mm -hmm. And it's the same color we used to line the octopus eyes, this dark green. So phthalo blue, raw sienna. Get a greenish. It's a little more raw sienna than phthalo blue. Army green, that's what I called it earlier. Dee -dee 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 -dee. And all I'm going to do with that is just sort of dab it around. I have a lot of paint on my brush. I don't want a ton, so I'm going to wipe some of it off on my towel. And I'm just dabbing it around on this like it's moss or grass or some kind of green shrubbery growing. Just to give it a little color in the foreground. As the sun's setting, we're getting that last little bit of color still showing. I really wanted this to be a bay, but I can't unsee it as being the gorge. <laughs> the Columbia Gorge. Maybe I need to make a clamming boat out there. <laughs> Go find pearls. Mm. Let's tell them about that show we've discovered so on I, YouTube. I have mixed feelings about that show. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. The show is called The Pearl Hunter, and it's this lady in China, and she goes into these creeks and finds these big clams, and then she busts them open. They're huge. They're like They're huge. this big They're around discs. Dinner plate size. Mm -hmm. uh, either that or she's really tiny. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, and she... No, they're big. She cracks them open, and she pulls out sometimes 20 pearls out of a single... It's a freshwater mussel mm -hmm. is what it is. But I have mixed feelings. Gorgeous color pearls. Because they're clearly just harvesting them just for the pearls. So they're not like eating. They're not eating them. Maybe they're not edible. They might not be. But still, I kind of think, you know, <clears throat> the activist side of me goes, it seems like such a waste for just a material object. They're still amazing to watch, though. The pearls are such pretty colors. It's not, it's not going to stop me from watching it later tonight. <laughs> but I could see why some You're people... betraying the activist side of you, then. It's a, <laughs> it's a conflict that I battle every day. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and paint these fir trees. And if you've painted with us for a while, you know exactly how we do these. But if you haven't, I'm going to show you. Or I'll just give us all a refresher on paper here. Okay, so uh, I want to use black. Or you can use the blue-black mix. Um, I, th I think that's what the... Trees in black. Okay, trees are in black. It's so close to that blue-black mix. I'm going to mix a drop of water with the paint, stir it around, just thin it out a bit. Let's say this is our land down here. <clears throat> I always plant the trunk first and you can go up into the sky or you can go from the sky downward, whatever feels right to you. Everybody will have a different um, idea of what feels comfortable. 
And then I have a little short guy here too, but you don't, you maybe just do the two at first and then add the third one. I um, start at the top. You want. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I, I don't, I jump around. I, I like to start at the top because <clears throat> I feel like I would, I want to have more control about where the top of the tree is uh -huh. rather than anything else. Okay. Like to me, that's the most important part. So the top of the tree is super pointy, and I want to emphasize that by just, I do a few little, like a little row of like five or six dots at the top of each. And if you think about it, when you get a Christmas tree, and it does have that one spike that sticks up that is oftentimes very crooked <laughs> for you to put the little Christmas angel or star on. So then I, I do a really tiny little mustache at the top. Mustache, y'all. Mustache, a little mustache. And then I under that real tight, I do another one. And another, some people like, like Paul I know likes to do this. He likes to zigzag back and forth really fast. We're working on a small surface, tiny tree, so you can do that. Or you can do more planned and do one side and then the other. One you know, side and then the other. And you want to just make sure that you cover a lot of your tree trunk. You can have a little bit of it showing here and there. But um, you don't want, here let me draw an, an unwanted tree here. <laughs> this would be what I see oftentimes. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it looks like it would make a really cool logo for some, like, hipster brewing company. Sure. <laughs> but to me, it kind of has, in the wild on a painting that's kind of all natural, it has this sort of fish bone, unhealthy look to it. And this is super fixable if you have that. Just give it a little point at the top and then make some tree boughs in between each of these. And just basically by doing that, you're sort of blotting them out. So there we go. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to do a series of little mustachey shapes that get gradually a tiny bit wider. It's real easy to go crazy and have it be really wide really fast. So I would say just a fraction wider each tree bow. And if you want to zigzag back and forth like this, that's fine too. I do have the foliage goes all the way to the ground in this painting, but you could also leave some of the... Uh, tree trunk showing if you want more of a Doug fur look. So make sure you have a little drop of water mixed with your paint. You'll be happier. And let's go ahead and plant this. Let's plant this one. It's one that if we goof up on it, it's not as noticeable because it's kind of, there's a lot of dark space there. I like to, I'll put a dot in the sky where I want it to start. And mm -hmm. I just sort of eyeball and sketch down. The tree trunk can be a little crooked. They are like crazy in real life. <laughs> Elise says she's excited about the gold leaf. Great. I'm excited about it too. It was really fun when we would do it in the studio. It just was a little more difficult with 32 students. And so one of them... <laughs> and air conditioning. And air conditioning because the leaf is super lightweight and it will float away in a heartbeat. Okay, so I'll, maybe I'll make this one a little bit taller. It's going to go right on top of this nice star I have. And go ahead and sketch down... Your tree trunk can be a little wider at the bottom, although it's not really going to show, so it's not a big deal. Like, this one's super skinny. Let's do those little dots, little row of, like, five, six dots at the top. So think of it like it's a stalk of wheat or, like, a stalk of, like, lavender. It grows in it with on a long stalk with a little shrubby thing at the top. Tiny, tiny little mustache. Like, like a mouse-sized mustache. <laughs> super tiny. Then another right under it that's a fraction wider. Then another right tight right under that. Not a lot of space between. You do want some air space. You don't have to have air space between every single bow. But a little air space here and there looks so amazing because then you've got this beautiful silhouette against this brightly, brightly lit sunset sky. These trees will probably go pretty fast just because it's a small surface. And if you notice, I like to lift and dab my brush so I get this truly like furry texture. So I'm gonna bring this all the way to the bottom. And in fact, under the tree, I'm gonna scribble a little on the ground underneath it because that would be the shadow. Our light source is on the other side of the tree. So the tree's gonna cast a little shadow back that way. 
Refresh your paint with a little bit of water. It does tend to just evaporate really fast. And I'm gonna paint the tiny little mouse mustache on this guy. And then another, and then another. You'll get really fast at these. Trees, I know, are a huge issue with a lot of new painters. And they were mm -hmm. for me, and they even are once in a while. I'll get one that I'm just like, I oh. just can't do it. <laughs> and like right now, I just globbed on a huge amount of paint. I've definitely had Everything, that Everything, for the most part, is fixable, though. Like, I think, like, for the... I feel like we, trees are one of those things I can knock out with my eyes closed almost at this point. But there are those... Humble brag. <laughs> no, let me finish. Well, it's true. I've been painting them for a long time and I've painted a lot of them. I feel very confident with it. But there are definitely those days where it's like, oh, wow, nothing is... My hands are not doing what I'm asking them to do. Yeah. Hey, how are we doing time-wise? We are at an hour and a half. In, okay. So we're doing really good. We'll be done pretty soon. We got a lot done on our octopus and uh, the whale too. So, and then we just have one last thing with this guy. So if you want, you can do just the two trees. I'm going to tuck a little third shorty in here. Yo, shorty. This is me. These it's are my your... oh, wait, These are on. my friends. They're all taller than me. If it was yesterday, we could be, hey, shorty, it's your Earth Day. <laughs> yes, these are for Earth Day. How about that? We'll dedicate these to Earth Day. Okay, so I'm going to do the little dabs at the top. Tiny little mustachio, and then mustache all the way down. Mustaches all the way down. <laughs> and a little shadow scribble behind the tree. And we are officially done with this one. When it dries, we'll put the rope through, and you've got a cute ornament. And you know what, you guys? You've got paint left. If you want to paint the back of these with a whole different design, or maybe do another design. Maybe this one didn't come out quite like you wanted it to and you can call it your practice side and this can be your real side. Please do use both sides because you absolutely can. It's great practice and it gives you an extra fun project to do. I had a really cool idea. Okay, let's It'd hear it. It'd be really neat to hang all three of these from a single piece of driftwood that you would hang on That would wall. be super cool. We've got a couple pieces of driftwood actually yeah, that we, we could... grabbed from Yaha. We could probably make that happen and throw, post a picture so you guys can see what that would look like. Yeah, I'll let you handle that. <laughs> All right, we got a Debbie McKenney says, Hi guys, you inspired me to paint tonight. I used supplies I had on hand and any kind of old my... Uh, oh, excuse me, any kind of did my own thing on a wood round. Perfect. Love it. Good for you, Debbie. That's awesome. Way to go. Yeah. And you guys, if you are comfortable sharing your art we have a discussion page for go box it's just called on our facebook page or on i'm sorry on facebook it is just called go box art crate so it's group. not it's a group it, it's a group yeah. yeah so i think our regular facebook page is just called the go box yep this one is called go box art crate and it's you have to join the group request to join it we'll add you and you can talk about art you can share your art you can compliment other people's art it's pretty fun to have. So please join it. Go Box Art Crate on Facebook. We just okay. had somebody join during the class. Nice. Let's go to the whale. Oh, it's a whale of a tail. <laughs> Let's paint the belly of the whale. The belly of the beast. And it is really close to the color of the water, but I made it a little lighter. So it's Bahama blue with a little white mixed in. Smallest brush. We're running out of room on here. Well, there's dry areas. <laughs> so I'm like going to make just a, kind of a minty, light minty color. That's what happens when you mix the white with it. It becomes aqua fresh. And very carefully with the little guy, I'll paint in the belly of the whale. And if you need to kind of shave into the dark part, you know, maybe it got a little carried away. Carried away. You can do that. You can thin out this. You can thin out this outline here by just brushing a little bit of that color overlapping it. <laughs> My whale looks like a cross between an orca and a butterfly koi. <laughs> it's a little chunky. I like it. He's been eating well. Okay. 
So feel free to turn your round any direction, whatever is makes it a little more comfortable to reach certain areas. And for me, I definitely want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Now you did some kind of white. Let me see yours. Let's show Paul's. So you guys saw it earlier. Um, he did, my well looks, my well looks like it's got, it's pregnant. <laughs> it's got a, like a really big belly here. Let's, uh, how was yours? <laughs> Mine has got a spectacular t tail. <laughs> Yours is just really passionate He's about... He's been enjoying the Doritos <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes, he has. But what I liked is how you, you added some white to the stomach, it looks like. Yeah. And you did a white highlight on the top of the face. That's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that, guys, if you want to. If not, just follow the directions on the page. But uh, what Paul did, which I thought looked really cool, they do have... Orcas do have a white belly and we just kind of have it light blue because it's under the water but feel free to put a tiny bit of white on the tip of your brush and maybe think of it like a highlight from the moon i like that idea and it's just i'm brushing it from the top and just sort of letting my brush run out of paint because i do end up leaving some of the light blue there and then feel free to take a tiny bit of white and highlight along the top edge of the nose area here Keep in mind, you can always come back and paint over it with the other color and you if could, you get. Yeah, yeah, if you, yeah. If you don't like it, just paint the blue right back over it. Super easy fix. And you can paint highlight along the top of this here, even the top of the dorsal fin. And then we've got our two uh, main fins to add on, which since we're using such small amounts of paint here, it's probably already mostly dry and we can add those little flipper fins now. And this one we have is coming across, and then we just have a tiny, short little bit of that other one to paint. So the colors we mixed there, that was phthalo blue and Bahama blue. Quite a bit more phthalo blue is what I used, anyway. And here's what I do. So paint dries a tiny bit darker. For any of you guys who've painted a wall in your house before, you know that. It dries a tiny bit darker than the way it looks right out of the tube. So what I usually do is I'll mix my color, I hold it up, and it's really close. And I know it's going to dry a little darker, so that'll probably make it even more close. I'm going to twist off excess paint, re-dip the tip of the brush, brush bristles. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and do this front main fin, because that'll help me know where to position the back one. And it's sort of going pointed down, like down at an angle. And it's literally shaped like a skinny almond. It goes beyond the belly, just a bit. So see how I, I did the almond shape like that? Fill that in. And then the other one's going to be a little bit higher and definitely shorter because we're not seeing all of this part, we're just seeing this part. And it's further away, so it would be technically a little smaller anyways. And then I do have a little tiny black eye. In fact, you could even like round that down a bit so you have a place to put the eye. I feel like that goes down a little low. What kind of whales were the ones we saw in Hawaii? I believe they were humpback whales. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay, for the, the eye is just black. If you want to do white, you could do white. I just kind of kept it simple and just did a little tiny black speck right there on the dark blue part. For the eye? For the eye. Oh, cool. What are you going to do? Same well, thing. And then if you want, you can highlight in white the top edge of this flipper fin there. Very small amount of paint on the brush, though, and this is still a little wet. Do you know that orcas actually kill great whites? Yes, I, I mean, do they are, that. They are, they're so cute, but they're very vicious. They're I actually considered one of the most vicious creatures in the ocean. Wow. <laughs> like, it's... They're so fun. This one's done. So we finished two... Oh, no, it's not done. And there is... I lied. We only have one little thing left. We're going to do a white moon... <laughs> I was going to say white moonshine. We're going to do the, the white glare from the... <laughs> moonshine is right. We're going to do white... You've been hitting the moonshine, haven't have you? I've been hitting Fresca. We're going to put the white um, reflection from the moon over the whale, and that makes it look more like it is actually underwater, because right now it's just like Did you know that there, right there. there is one pod of orcas off the Oregon coast? 
No, I did not know that. There's one. I learned a lot about undersea creatures today. So. You're welcome. Yeah. You're just full of knowledge. I paid attention in science class. <laughs> so on this, primarily what we have are is uh, highlighting and suction cups. All done with the small brush. Let's start with the highlighting. And the highlighting helps bring the tentacles out in front, like in here, in this area, which looks just kind of like blah and plain. You can see here, the highlight right through here, which I'll add, really helps to bring this one out. And it's not white, it is Bahama blue mixed with white. In fact, I could use, let's see what it looks like if I just use plain old Bahama blue. That's what I've used on it. mine. It doesn't show up a ton, so I'm gonna add a little white to it. But I also have a completely different color. You have a completely different guy going on there. So I'm gonna put some white down, stir a little of this into it. So I wanna lighten it, maybe a shade or two lighter than this. I'll just say that my octopus really enjoyed the late 80s and early 90s. <laughs> it's, it looks like it's ready to go to the roller skating rink and totally. roller skates of Michael Jackson. I used to have this like pullover like windbreaker that was like real poofy and it was all this mix it of was that turquoise color, wasn't and purple. It? And pretty close. Not bad. I just remembered that was a, I loved that jacket. You were so cool. I was 14. It was awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and highlight along here. Decide if you want it a little lighter. Like this one here is a little more on the Bahama blue side. This is more white. Maybe I'll yeah, maybe I'll come back and add a, a white highlight too. Just plopped in there with it. Highlight right along here. So these two spots, uh, let's pretend we have a moon. Way up here we can't see. And so it's, it's our light bulb and it's shining down. And you know what, I am gonna lighten mine because I feel like you guys won't be able to see it very well. I think this is a good opportunity to create some separation between things, too. Yep, definitely. So I'm going with pretty much just straight white here. And it's got the Bahama Blue that's wet underneath it, so it's sort of mixing. And then along here, I'm going to pretend that this goes up, and this is just the muscle part of the body. They're pretty formless. <laughs> That's how they get they in there. They feel because... like, I mean, they look like the way I feel after being on the treadmill. Oh. <laughs> and I'll do a little highlight here. And then a highlight here on the top of this little curve. Not a lot of paint. I'm adding just, a, it's like a dry brush thing. I'm not adding much paint at all. Mm -hmm. And then back here, I'll highlight this one. I could like highlight this side too. And I thought about it when I designed this, but I thought, you know, we're, we're doing all those little suction cups and there's not a lot of room for those highlights to even show up. So no need to add them. I feel like this little swoop makes him look angry. So I need to come back around a little more. It looked like an angry eyebrow. Let's go ahead and highlight, wash the brush. Get any blue, off, like Bahama blue off of it. And let's go ahead and highlight the eyes. And they are, the highlights in the eyes are as small as the stars. So just a tiny little tip of the bristles, poking the paint there. I'll do one highlight in the upper right corner of each eye. And then I always like to make one in the lower left corner of the eye. So then he has these wise, shiny, highlighted eyes. Makes it look a lot more glassy and real. And now it's just time for the suckers. They're easy. I'm gonna paint you sucker. So they're bigger than the stars. That will help them stand out from the stars. They are on the top edge of this, and the top edge of this, and top edge of that down along the side here. And then we got a little bit showing right in here. Let's do those first. One, I can only fit two on this one. My coordinates were off when I designed this one. Use and then, the force, Jenny. <laughs> let's go ahead and make them along this one. So I have a little more paint on the tip of the bristles here to make these a little larger than the stars. We're sort of looking at them from the side view here. We're just doing white? Yep. Unless you want to do a different color. No, that's okay. Let's go ahead and do this one. So, yeah, we're just sort of seeing the underside. Like, Mr. Octopus has his tentacle flipped up and we're just seeing the underside here. 
I think an octopus painting for the kids kit would be fun. I, we have one painting we do in the studio that's so much fun. We we paint this pink octopus and then in the end I let the kids, I give them suggestions and let them add a uh, monocle, top hat, bow tie, or if it's a girl they add eyelashes and hair bows. It's really adorable. And giving kids that creative license at the end is so good for them. So good for them to make their own choices. So they'll follow the instructions throughout the painting and then at the end they get to make their own choices on adding some things. And they always have choices with different we all colors. Do. Yep. Never let ourselves stop being kids. And yeah. Doing what we Let's want. Let's see, it was Picasso who said, Every child is born an artist. It's whether or not you decide to stay one when you get older. Something like that. I think botched it, but it's something like that. No, I got what you're going. All right. So, any other highlights? Uh, like, I could do a little backlighting along here. Let's see what that looks like. It didn't destroy anything. You can see the difference. I didn't do it here. I did it here. I could, I do have room to put like a little sucker right there, maybe right here too. <clears throat> but the octopus is done, unless you want to tweak it at all. You know, you, you have options. You can go back and you can sort of uh, soften up any of these little freckly bits if you want. There's lots of options on such a tiny little wood round. So I'm going to set that one aside and we just have one last little step with the whale, which is nice and dry now. Completely dry. <clears throat> I like my octopi. <laughs> yeah, Octopus. we'll show it. Okay, so uh, now I'm going, to, like <laughs> I'm going to do the thing where I, I put the bead of water on the palette next to the white. And the water, I mean the water is colorful right now. It's not colorful, it's kind of grayish. That's okay. Just stir a little white pigment into that. I wanted the consistency of just a little bit thicker than water. And now from mixing the paint, I've got a lot of paint on my brush. I don't want a lot of paint because I don't want to cover my whale. If I went on with a lot of paint right now, it would completely cover it. And uh, I don't want to do that. I took some time making it cute. So I've got a lot of paint on the brush. I'm going to dab it off on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to go back and forth over the whale here and there. Use your fingertip. Where's the color you're using? Uh, right here. I feel like I, I had a little, it was a little too opaque, so I'll just take a little clean water on my brush and smear it around just a bit. There's some bright highlights from the moon, so then it makes it look like we've got the surface of the water here and the whale under it. And you know what you can do too is you can kind of do just like down a quarter inch, mm -hmm. and then it looks like maybe with the, the camera we're looking through is like right at the surface. Yeah, you could do a brighter highlight along the back edge here. You can extend it out a little wider than the moon, I guess. So you can see my brush has hardly any paint on it at all. It's, I started off with a little too much. If you need to repaint the eye, like that's where I ran into, where I just sort of obliterated the eye. I'll just repaint a little black speck right on top there. And voila, done. I'm gonna put a little kissy mark. <laughs> a kissy mark? What's yeah, where mark? his, he's just kissing the water, so he's making a little ripple. Okay. Oh, I see. I see what you're talking about. Okay, so now for your twine, very simple. I hand cut all of these for you guys. <laughs> I sat at the kitchen counter and we had a movie on and I just measured and cut and measured and cut and measured and cut like 80 some. No, more than that. It would have been 150 ish. 150. <laughs> okay. So then I just sort of, um, pull these equal and tie a little knot at the top. You can decide how, how big you want this loop to be. Just pull it down further. 
and make it into a knot. Boom, there it is. One thing you can do, I did this for a friend. Let me see if I have, oops, sorry, I bumped the, bumped the camera, are we okay? Yeah, I mean, as long as you can see it. Okay, there I'm done with my, oh, I gotta put some. Yeah, put the, the twine through. Let's see, I had some wooden beads and I think they're right here. Oh, why don't you just bump our light so it's not Sorry. <laughs> on us anymore. You're like a bull in a china shop. I you? am. You know, it's just, I get my creative brain going and I'm like, let me show you this. And let me show you that. It doesn't matter <laughs> if the lights are on. I had these wooden beads that came, I bought a set of these a while back <clears throat> that I didn't like. I felt like the they were too inconsistent in sizing and uh, the bark to paint on was too rough. It would have been really frustrating. But I liked these little beads that, that came That was the with. chair. <laughs> So this is like, if you have little beads laying around your house, why not make these pretty? Oh, that is cool. These could be painted. I feel like this needs to be watered. Getting this rope through this hole here is interesting. I kind of phrase the rope. Look at that. <laughs> Uno. Technical difficulty. Let me try this side. You know what? You need to like burn this. Hmm? Like you can burn the rope to make it glued together. That won't work with this. Okay. Never mind. Forget that, I said that it. That only works with like, uh, <laughs> like nylon based. So I think on the ones I used, I, I was able to thread both strands through. You could put a little dab of super glue on the tip, though. Oh, I could. But, I mean, if you had a bunch of beads, you could bead. That would be really cute. Why not? So, yeah, I did a little wooden painting on one of our birch boards for her and Oof. tied a twine around it and made one of these and put the bead on it. And it looks so rustic and cute. If you were to, like, these are, wood, these plain wood beads could be painted. Michaels.com, everybody, or wherever. Amazon. Super Big Mart. <laughs> Wait, what's the one from Wally? Oh. Buy and B, save. No, is there the B B and B and L? Buy Buy and large. Yeah, B, Buy and large. B yeah, and L. I love that movie. Okay, so there, we have it. I think this is the one I painted tonight, right? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> There we have it, our three wood rounds. Feel free to decorate your twine. Let's show Paul's now. I'll move mine aside. So Paul's octopus is very, like he kept calling it a Muppet. I could see it being a little Muppety, but it's cute. I like the colors, you're right. It looks like the 1980s jacket. And then anything landscapey, he's always gonna nail really good. Yours almost looks like it's a valley. Because could you be. can't see the strong water line. It's open line. for interpretation. Yeah, could be a little field of flowers. Could be. Like the golden flowers. And then we've got the the Fritos, Frito-Lay, is that who makes Doritos? Frito-Lay? Yeah. Yeah. Frito-Lay um, sponsor whale's, guy here. That whale's got some <laughs> junk in the trunk, let me tell you. I like the little water ring that you did. That's cute. Little okay. kiss. Yep. So there you have it. That was fun. I enjoy doing little different projects like this. And I hope you guys did too. Let me know because I'm happy to continue researching things. I'm going to turn us and... back on. Ready? Yeah. Here we are. I'm happy to continue ah. researching projects. And it's fun for me because I get to do them along with you. And I get to do the like the whole like learning process and, and buying the products to like, let's see how this works. I love it. It's very that. therapeutic too. I love it. Yeah, because I mean, I've been painting on canvas forever, so I know I personally can get really tired of it, and if you guys get tired of it, I don't want that to happen, so we'll just oh. throw in some extra projects there. Oh, boy, that was a big yawn. It's been a long time. Yeah, while. so that was uh, great. Hope you guys are doing really good, staying healthy um, through these weird times, and um, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping things can go back to normal pretty soon, but we're also playing it safe and staying home and... Uh, 
painting. <laughs> yeah, we've kind of got like the ultimate stay at home hobby. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do. But I mean, unless you want to get out and paint and play now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, as far as like sitting at home, the nice thing about our world nowadays is we have access to the internet and all kinds of photos for to be able to use as photo reference and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so we tend to do that too. Just yeah. make sure if you're trying to sell something that you're not copying somebody else's yeah photo and um yeah go ahead. but if you're just using like somebody's photo for a reference piece to practice yeah no problem just yeah. don't don't try to claim it as your own <laughs> <laughs> out of respect yeah so anyway yeah you can uh, if you have someone who wants to do these you can buy just you can buy just the rounds right like just the kit for the rounds we actually, we have, I don't have just the rounds as a selection. It's the April box. It's the April okay. box. I mean, you can, so they they, do, no, no, they you, you can buy, you can buy the project of just the rounds. Yeah, that's yes. what I was saying. I thought you meant, can yeah. people just order just rounds? Well, I mean, you could buy them and then paint whatever you want on them. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other thing is, is these would actually be a lot of fun to do on River Rocks. Yes. I was saying that in the very beginning. You oh, could you definitely did? do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I probably had the headphones on. It was like... Burr, burr, burr. You were probably texting. Wiki, wiki, wiki. <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions. We're uh, we're pretty busy on the weekends, uh, staying busy, like packing the kits and shipping and all that. And uh, we're always working. So feel free to reach out. And um, hope you guys have a great weekend. That's what... Like our video. <laughs> Click the thumbs like up. Like it. Subscribe. Click the bell. Click the bell. <laughs> Ring the bell. Ding a ling a ling. But most importantly, keep painting. Keep, keep doing painting. art. Keep being creative. It's so know, good for your brain. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. No, sometimes things will seem hard at first, but the more you do it, yeah, nobody ever it's started It's really out easy here. to throw in the towel. And yep. it, it, I have done that with many projects. Yep. Even Da Vinci, he said, art is never finished. Never. Only abandoned. <laughs> Only abandoned, exactly. <laughs> I have a lot of abandoned projects. And I think a lot of things, like a lot of times... I mean, we're paintings done, so we can go on and on as long as we want. But, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but anyway, a lot of times people don't stop to think that to a lot of artists, and I'm talking about the masters and and even you know, I'm not comparing myself to a master by any means, <laughs> but us who are working. No, I'm not bragging. <laughs> Let me finish my sentence. <laughs> we uh, we look at every piece as being a study. Yeah. So every piece that we create when we're creating a new painting, there's some motivation behind what's going on. It's like we're studying trees. Tree. Yeah. How are we gonna? How are we? Muppets. Gonna, <laughs> Muppets. Light. You know, uh, everything. There should be some purpose. Chunky whales. Other than just like that would be a great one. A good study would be how to get a whale to not look up like it's got a big bloated tail. Um, <laughs> but every time we paint, every time I sit down to paint, at least I'm trying to figure out and. Oh, some way to take it another step. I feel like your will tonight. <laughs> it like Boy, looks like you're it... not just mean to me. You're mean to yourself. <laughs> it looks like it like can't hardly stretch or yeah. anything. Like that. I'm so short and chunky. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go now. Um, we are gonna go have some wine. So yeah, you guys enjoy the rest of your night, rest of your weekend, and we will paint again with you soon. Remember, we love all you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for helping support us. Yep. And we'll see you next time. We're out. Cheers. Cheers.